Hello, Internet friends. My name is Bay, and this is going to be the Final Fantasy 14 X Final Fantasy 16 crossover Land on Fire. This is the event where Clive, which I guess canonically in the new Rising Tide DLC in 16, I haven't played the DLCs yet, that's coming up, but I guess there's a point where he gets uh, blooped over to Eorzea. And we will talk to this neophyte adventurer seeks the warrior of light. Forgive me my boldness, but are you Bei Kuan? Are you not? <laughs> you could just say nah. <laughs> nah. That'd be pretty funny. Then my search is at an end. A uh, begoggled gentleman tasked me to find you, you see, in hopes of entreating your aid with some matter he deigned not share with me. Pray remain here, and I shall fetch him at once. Okay. I think it's the minstrel. He's in the image anyway. Greetings, champion. The wounds, champion. It is I who employed the young adventurer to facilitate this impromptu audience. As for the why, I have a request that you, and you alone, can fulfill. Pray listen well, and my tale begins with a most unsettling dream. In it did I behold the evening sky, boundless and shimmering. As I drank deep of its beauty, I spied two stars sailing across the inky expanse, one of purest white, the other blushing scarlet, their courses set such that they might pass without collision. Sharply and suddenly, the Scarlet Star shifted its trajectory high above a burning landscape did its path intersect with that of the White Star. Their conjunction of the spheres, mocked by a brilliant explosion of light, even in slumber, I was awestruck by the spectacle. But what does it mean? A lovely tale, but I failed to see it had to do with me. Yep, that's how, yep. Mm-hmm, that makes sense. I do not wish to make any claims with certainty, and yet, whatever greater meaning this vision might hold, I am convinced that the blazing white star represents the warrior of light. In other words, you. And should these portents indeed foretell future events, you are thus fated to encounter the scarlet star, whomsoever they may be. I therefore humbly request that you accompany me to the burning land from my dream, and I might witness the vision's denouement? Denouement. Hmm. I will compensate you for your trouble, of course. That's a new SAT word. I've never read that word before in my life, I don't think. The question is, which territory on Eorzea might be considered burning, metaphorically or otherwise? The bowl, the bowl of embers where I battled Ifrit a burning wall in eastern Thanaland, or a place rich in corrupted crystal deposits they can look quite fiery. I have to go with the silly answer. It's obviously the bowl of embers, but... These crystals would be an immense in size akin to, to those which comprise the burning wall. I, that site well resembles the sweeping scene for my dream. Oh, never mind. Got it in one. The first mystery is solved. We shall leave for Eastern Thanalan and the infamous Burning Wall at once. Quest accepted. I mean, of course it's Ifrit. Final Fantasy 16 Ifrit is in this whole trial. There's a, a specific bespoke solo duty we will take place in which actually has some new controls or has a new dodge control or something. After being accosted by a neophyte adventurer, you find yourself in the presence of the infamous wandering minstrel. Okay. The itinerant tell tailor, tell ta tale teller shares with you a dream he had supposedly prophetic in nature, which seems to foretell you meeting with a metaphorical scarlet star in some fiery landscape. 
deeming the burning wall the closest match to his vision or this vision he bids you accompany him to eastern thanalan where he hopes to witness the denouement to this celestial i gotta look that word up denouement the final part of a play yeah denouement movie or narrative in which the the strands of the plot are drawn together and matters are explained or resolved i feel like i've never heard this word before and i have a film degree usually it's the climax the climax of a chain of events yes or finale final scene final act last act so this is a fancy word for it denouement denouement no sorry it's freaking french <laughs> it's the denouement <laughs> i'm saying it wrong this whole time oh okay sure sure one more time for those in the back denouement the denouement all right i have uh, yep sure that's the sat word of the day from a different language let us go my fairy friend let us fly away oh man the denouement i'm about to use that in in regular parlance now just because <laughs> i feel like i should have known that word but definitely was never taught it so how the heck am i supposed to know two plus years of film school nothing it's so quiet all of a sudden well, we're going all the way over. This is where we got the uh, one of the mounts. Mm, there he is. Hello. All right, where's Clive? The Burning Wall, an apt name indeed. It is said that these crystalline structures were formed when falling shards of Dalamud pierced the land's ethereal current. Some see them as a symbol of rebirth, a manifestation of renewed life. Don't say that word around me right now. I'm still playing through seven rebirth hard. Don't get that out of here, okay? But as I'm neither here nor there, let's have a look around, shall we? Spyglass is at the ready. We get a spyglass? You can just find Clive laying in the dirt. Survey your surroundings for anything out of the ordinary. You may move the camera as well as zoom in and out. Target an area, inspect it with the left click. Mm -hmm. Starter! I found Clive. Make an unusual discovery. Is that the only thing in this scene? I'm just curious if there's any other Easter eggs or it's just it's just Clive face down in the dirt. Looks like it's just Clive face down in the dirt. I wonder how they pulled that model and then reconstructed it to work in 14 because it, it's so similar. Same thing with the uh, Ifrit model that happens soon. Well, during this quest line, it's about an hour long. <laughs> it's Final Fantasy 16 music playing too. That's cool. It also looks really striking because Clive's got the new visual update that actually isn't in for our character. So he just looks better than us. All right, time to do a Ben Starr impression. Ugh. Where am I? That's not Ben Starr. Where is it? Where's, where's the Clive? What What's going on? It's kind of like raspy, but deep. I don't think I can do that range without practicing it. <laughs> I 
Look at that man. A dream led you to me. I understand how absurd that may sound. We ourselves were unsure what awaited us here. As for who you are, I am content to be known as the, as who we are. I'm content to be known as the minstrel. This stalwart hero is Bacon. And we have the pleasure of your name. Clive. I the last thing I remember was the ruins. Yeah, so like I said at the start, there's apparently a canonical connection with the new DLC and this crossover. But I haven't played it yet, so I don't know. My head. Where? How did I come to be in this place? <laughs> Twin seen you were knocked senseless. Confusion is to be expected. For safety's sake, I suggest we make for town and have the... Oh, it's the... For on tistery. It's the freaking fancy word for doctor. The... Fraudistery. I can't even pronounce this word, man. Yeah. Frontistery. It's close enough. <laughs> Physician, look you over. I shall see our patient receives proper treatment. Would you mind waiting for us at Scholar's Walk? Sounds good. The Wandering Minstrel is in some ways a Yoshi P insert. Oh, I know. If the Minstrel didn't use overbaked words, he wouldn't be very good at being a Minstrel now, would he? That's correct. This is this is correct. It also just comes down to, to reading Final Fantasy XIV dialogue sometimes is a bit... is a bit much. <laughs> it's just... There's just a lot of words. We've got, we've got two SAT words for the day already. And we're only 12 minutes into this quest. Our foundling is being cared for as we speak, but I'm told he should be released soon. Hopefully it was not that a bite of food and a little bed rest couldn't cure. Oh, I'm going to have a blast listening to and then reading Uriange dialogue when the MSQ comes out later this year. Well, month plus-ish. It was kind of you to wait. Thank you. What of your condition? Much improved. The physica also noted no signs of injury or illness. Yet my memories remain hazy. How did I end up here? Whatever I was doing, it was important, I'm sure of it. I must return as soon as possible. I see. Look how different. Because this is the current build of 14. Look how different the texture work versus Clive, who's basically running on the Dawn Trail engine, which again doesn't come out for a month plus at this stage. Is uh, It's striking. We cannot leave him in this state. We must help him restore his memories and find his way home. But of this city, Clive, do any parts of Uldah strike you as familiar? No. Maybe I've simply forgotten, but I recognize nothing. Hmm. Not Old Dawn, then. Still, I should like to think that the sights and sounds of a well-known locale will hasten your recovery. The Burning Wall, the place where we found you, is situated midway betwixt Old Da and Gridania. Perhaps a trip to the Twelves Wood is in order. Gridania, you say? The name rings no bells, but I have no better suggestions. And you would take me there? Yeah, we're still in the current lighting engine, so that also gets upgraded in Dawn Trail. Meanwhile, I shall make the rounds of the neighboring settlements and ask if any have heard of you. Let us rendezvous in Gridania anon. 
Yeah, Clive can't ethereally travel, so we have to take the long way, take an airship, or walk. Unless there's going to be a joke made about aetherite travel. Look at this handsome man. Apparently he's only as tall as a male Vieira, which male Vieira are short. This entire situation has me knocked off balance, I'm afraid. Bay, was it? I appreciate you coming to my rescue. Still, you must have your own business to attend to. We can set out whenever you're ready. A land on fire. Quest one. Quest complete. Pain to recall. Clive is ready to travel through Gridania. Are we ready? Then let's head out. This Gridania the minstrel mentioned, is it far? Will we need mounts? <laughs> By airship, you have those. Not that I mean to doubt you, friend. If you say you're boarding an airship, then that's what we'll do. He's still a little more gruff, like he's still down here somewhere. Uh, I don't have the enunciation. Oh, it's still gonna just teleport us? Oh no, yeah, we just teleported to the airstrip. That's fine. Or the airport. Airship port? Ship airport. Bay, if I may ask a foolish question, do these airships of yours actually fly? A foolish question indeed, then. Your expression tells me as much. The first time traveling by airship? Or is there an airship where you're from? There used to be airships, I take it, in the 16 world, but that was uh, a while ago. In the olden times. The 16 world is pretty medieval comparatively to 14's world, which is that sci-fantasy magic plus technology world. Considering my laser sword on my belt right now. <laughs> so it would seem. It's odd. I know that the weapon on my back is called a sword. I understand what it's for and how to wield it. Fog as my memories may be, my general knowledge seems intact. Yet hearing you speak of functional airships, I felt confusion disbelief for something you can clearly think of as commonplace I can make no sense of it where was I before now and patrolling on this is pointless forward is the only way yeah so this is it's tattooed Clive too so Final Fantasy 16 takes place over three acts there's young flashback Young Clive, then there's young adult Clive, then there's adult Clive. Uh, adult Clive is the uh, more bearded, five o'clock shadowed, tattoo removed. This Clive is, well, which the DLCs take place at different points. They're not all end game. The, both of the DLCs take place during the story. So I'm assuming that the Leviathan DLC happens when it's just young adult Clive. Also, considering he has just his regular sword on him. I, I'm assuming 16 is both a different realm and different time. I don't think there's anything that's more connected than just the fact that they're Final Fantasy games. Because we've had a crossover with 15 as well, like directly, right? So it's just, it's just you know, it's timey-wimey planetary realm travel nonsense Final Fantasy stuff. But considering Yoshi P was the is the game director of 14 and was the game director of 16, a Final Fantasy 16-14 crossover was inevitable. To feel that bracing wind, the deck shuddering beneath your feet as you rise into the sky, my memory may be faulty, but that was an experience I'm sure I'd not soon forget. So this is Gridania. Seems very unlike the city we just left. But we're in the rainforest now, so... Where to begin? I think it's best if I follow your lead. Clive is now accompanying you. Let's go, boy. Talk. The city certainly has a different feel to Uldah. 
not only the architecture but the people as well again we are we are in the uh in the rainforest compared to the mountainous desert This tavern, it reminds me of somewhere I've been before. Uh-huh. No, it's no use. I can feel the memory, but it's like grasping at smoke. But maybe if you were to show me somewhere else? It's a neat little shout, and it's kind of like the, um... It's one of the tavern and inns, probably in the Act 2 part of 16. Before everything goes pear-shaped. And or tits up. And or gets bad. If you know, you know. If you're watching this right now, I have my entire Final Fantasy 16 playthrough on my YouTube channel, which you're currently watching this video on if you're not watching it live. So you could watch my entire 16 playthrough and then a bunch of endgame stuff if you wanted. It's a very long, hour-ish long episodes each. It's like 50-something episodes? No, 60-something. I don't know. It was long, a long, long, long series. Yeah, they can do a lot of connections in 14 because of the whole reflections and the multiple worlds stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and Ivalice is in 14 as well so that there's that there's that tactics crossover like the entire Shadowbringers relic story is tactics oriented with even some of the characters from tactics being not the exact same but being as a part of this world yeah a chocobo now that's something i recognize it it's more than that i had my own chocobo once i'm sure of it that is for when and or the where. Yep, that is true. I can't think of Clive's Chocobo's name off the top of my head right now. It has been some months since I've played it. He even has a different run cycle. They really just ported his entire skeleton over. Look at him. Because <laughs> that's not like a higher run cycle. That's kind of neat. An impressive crystal. Not a mother crystal, surely? No, not nearly large enough. Uh, but I'm trying to remember the fog in my head almost seems to grow thicker. <laughs> Let's see, Clive. We're still going. Oh. This is truly a beautiful place. Taking a liking to Gridania then? Or have you remembered anything else? I mean, I'm from Gridania. So, I appreciate that. No, I'm not. I'm from Limsa, technically. Right? No. My starting job... I'm trying to remember back to when I started this job over two plus years ago. <laughs> My starting job is from Gridania. Oh. Uh, I just aligned with the uh, Limsa Free Company. That's where I got confused. Sorry, there's lots of systems in this game, especially for stuff that I started over two plus years ago. I do like what I've seen of it. it. Seems a peaceful life here among the trees, only... I just can't shake the strangest feeling. As if it's too peaceful, and that doesn't sit right. Patrol reporting, Commander! All is quiet with the Ixtal, no sightings of Garuda! For which we are profoundly grateful. At ease, soldier. <laughs> Did he say Garuda? <laughs> Sorry, the primals 
or aeons or icons are very different in this world. You there. This Garuda you speak of. <laughs> Sir, are you all right? Hey, do you know this gentleman? Yeah, kind of. I met him about 24 minutes ago. Memory loss, you say? I'm sorry to hear that. Though it seems Garuda's name has lit a spark of some sort. I was in a battle with Garuda. I fought her. I'm sure of it. Please, you must tell me more. Anything that might help me remember my past. Of course. Gridania owes a debt of gratitude to any who stood against that destructive fiend. Oh man, ARR textures. However, there is one more suited to the task than I. Our elder seed seer is well versed not only in primal lore, but also in the treatment of bodily afflictions. She is sure your best hope of for recovery. I will send word ahead to Stillgate Fane. Stand ready to escort our guests and audience. To an audience, even. Understood, Commander. Pray find me at Nafika's altar in Old Gridania, and I'll see that you are <gasps> granted entry to the Lotus Stand. I don't know why that, that recruit's voice is so gruff. It looks like he's a kid. Been a smoker for his entire life. The way back to it. what I've lost begins with Garuda. Of that I am certain. The Lotus Stand lies ahead. If you will follow me, please. He had a frog in his throat earlier. He's better now. Oh gosh, a Kane Senna voice. Hmm. I don't know about that one, Chief. Greetings, honored guests. Commander Helua has apprised me of your friend's condition. This is he? Pleasure to meet you. I am Kane Sena, the Elder Seat Seer of Gridania. I thank you for your gracious welcome. I am Clive, Clive Rosfield. Though beyond that, I fear my introduction may be lacking. Please, concern yourself not with proprieties. Tis your memory loss we are here to address. I am told Garuda's name awakened some previous recollection. Yes, and the instant I heard it, a hazy vision of battle rose unbidden. I think perhaps if I could hear more of Garuda. A wish easily granted. Garuda is the deity revered by the Ixal, a people who once dwelled here in the Twelveswood. She appears as a winged entity, half bird, half woman. She commands the wind itself. Most frightening, however, is her capricious temper, when unpredictable as the howling storm. I should add that Bay has fought against Garuda in her primal incarnation. A winged woman of volatile temperament. With power over the wind, a fitting description of the opponent I remember. But a deity? No. The will behind that monstrous visage was distinctly mortal. I suspect Clive's Garuda and Eorzea's Primal are not one and the same. Plot device, the NPC enters the cutscene. Mainly as Clive himself is not of our world. 
Explain yourself, minstrel. I went back to where we discovered Clive and questioned folk in all the nearby settlements. No one person recognized his description. Such a distinctive tattoo escaping the notice of every local rumor monger for malms around. Imporpable. Im... 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 Improbable. I'm trying to read more. I was like, wait, there's going to be a spicy word coming up soon. It's not improbable, to say the least. Oh, man. Led me to consider another possibility. One consistent with past accounts. I have heard of visitors from other worlds somehow stumbling through reality's curtain and finding their way to our star. Yeah, it's not the first time this has happened. It's like the fifth. My brand, it's, it's the mark of a bearer. Does it pain you to remember? I feel the memories trying to surface, but when I strain to recall, a, a piercing ringing fills my ears. Garuda, bearer, Ifrit. Another primal's name. But seeing the pain has a less than tangible source. Long have I studied the healing arts, yet I sense no shadow of illness in your body. Your suffering stands not from injury nor sickness. Victims of terrible events have been known to suppress their own memories out of instinct. One's subconscious denies attempts to confront the awful truth, the mind creating a shield of pain to protect the heart. The barrier is of my own making. How then am I to overcome it? With our aid, of course. Yes, me, the purple-haired bun boy. Fate has brought us together, and together we shall triumph over this adversity. Squinty eyes. <laughs> okay, good. Probably no more Kanai Sena voice. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you think me from another world, and my memories of said world are not like to return unless I acknowledge some terrible truth, a truth my mind refuses to remember. Tis a confounding dilemma, I agree, and I have given thought to a solution. I believe that the shackles which bind your mind may yet be struck off in the heat of battle, a drastic measure perhaps, especially when not at your best. Which is why I turn to you, Bay. You are the twin to Clive's wandering star. Your involvement is no accident. The path I see is thick with thorns. And if you've the will to walk it, then gird yourself of, for war and await me at Apkalu Falls. Well, the next strange old English word was gird. So it was definitely not... Anything too crazy there. Quest complete. The path infernal. Clive seems somewhat bemused. The minstrel has a plan, it seems. But he shares little beyond confusing metaphor. Still, I'm willing to indulge him if he means making progress. We're to meet him in Apkalu Falls, right? And where is that to be found? Good, not far then. Let's get on with it. Oh, he just walks ahead? Okay. Is that so we can just teleport there? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So I'll wait to do this one up to the amphitheater, I guess. Do, 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 do. Doesn't only get us too far. Swoosh. Mm. 
So this Clive is post the Garuda battle. So I wonder if it's when he was hospitalized after fighting Garuda for the first time. I thought it was part of the DLC because that's what he talks about the ruins. But perhaps it's not tied to the DLC and it's tied to the base game. I don't know. Because he does get his butt kicked during the uh, Garuda stuff, but that could be where this connects, but... Hmm. This place, why here? Because this waterfall is where the legendary Archon Louis Swa, aka Louis Sox, gathered a band of adventurers in the time of the seventh Umbral Calamity. Their purpose? To extinguish the infernal Ifrit. Ifrit? Uh, I know something is there, I just... Why can't I remember? Spoiler alert, Clive is Ifrit. At least in his world. Clive recalled several words in the Elder Seed Seer's presence. Words which brought him pain, while the significance of bearer eludes me. You and I are more familiar with Ifrit. Even though I think the 14 pronunciation would just be Ifrit, whereas the 16 pronunciation is Ifrit. Although interchangeable dialect, pronunciation, whatever. Considering your reaction to the mere mention of the name, it is likely that the primal, or its equivalent in your world, is deeply connected to your condition. See what I said moments ago? Thus, if I resolve to weave my lyrical magics and bring you face to face with the Ifrit of our world. Here, where Archon Louis Swa paved an ethereal path to the primal's lair, will my words be given substance within the vision which takes form? Will you do battle with a phantom of our mind's creation? Hey, I'm not doing combat sims in 7 Rebirth hard mode right now, but this is pretty close. <laughs> this is basically a combat sim. Imaginary though this confrontation may be, I fear your suffering will all be will be all too real. Yet you must persevere. For your hidden truth will not be unearthed without hardships. <laughs> Combat sims all over the place. Just a very Final Fantasy thing. Take heart, Scarlet Star, and call upon the strength of your shining twin. Your past awaits. It is somewhat poignant that I did this on my paladin considering I'm in my silver and gold armor to Clive's black and red all right let's crank that in-game volume so I'm sure we're gonna have some cool music Where has he sent us? You stand in the Bowl of Embers, the site where the Amalja summoned their patron deity and the stage upon which the Warrior of Light became a slayer of gods. Tis but convincing illusion the body of recounted tale given birth by fanciful verse. Come forth, Lord of the Inferno. Dude, it's the dark sign. <laughs> An accurate fact simile, yet not quite the free you know. No, not quite the same. I'm 
But wait, there's more. There he is. Time to uncover the truth or ready when you are. Yeah. Together then. Thing which killed Joshua. Yes, I've been on its trail, seeking vengeance for my brother. This fiend must pay. Fight with me, Bay. <laughs> with my laser sword. During this battle, you will gain access to special duty actions as follows. Use rising flames to charge the foe and inflict high damage. With the proper timing, you can use dodge to avoid taking damage, even if you are within the area of an enemy's attack. Certain enemy attacks will be preceded by a countdown icon if this countdown progresses to the dodge icon, quickly use the dodge action. After executing a successful dodge, the dodge action will change to precision strike, which provides an opportunity to inflict additional damage. Is it going to actually give me a vehicle hotbar? No, it's just extra buttons. So it's just this and dodge. I guess I'm clicking them. Yes, <laughs> all of that. That's so good. Even has like the pop-ups from 16. Animation works on a caster. Really cool though. I 
I don't have my actual regular paladin charge though. So, oh, whoops. It does time out. Okay. His flames grow hotter. Watch yourself. I can probably double that up. I see. Can I break his tether? Can I take his tether? No. Oh. Oh shit. Defend Clive. Yeah. wants to save my other ability for that but Wait, that did work and then didn't work. Did you see it popped up that I could use it, but then I couldn't? Oh gosh. So like 16, it's silly. Oh, I clicked away. Oh well. He does a similar thing like our Ifrit does. Well, can you not dodge those? Oh. I was doing Phoenix things. He's even doing like the animation, like the actual. Uh, still gets me. Yeah. It's 40 yards. I can do whoosh. the whole middle of the room I guess I probably could have dodged it but oh I was too early
Ah, damn. Wonder how high you can get the actual overall combo. Oh. I blamed another to spare myself the guilt. I fear that by accepting it, I would lose what little was left of me. But I accept the truth of it now. You are not a freak. I am. <laughs> Yeah, different eye color usually what shows it apart. And the flames are actually orange, not that weird purplish, purplish red. That's cool. Definitely by porting over those combat mechanics, they really tease you to want to play 16, which is the goal, obviously. Apparently Final Fantasy 16 didn't really sell very well. In the battle against your own mind, it would seem you have emerged the victor. Intriguing. It's Torgal. It has not released anything other than the PS5 yet. The PC release is this fall. The PC release with both DLC is this fall, I believe. So I'm sure it'll pick up lots of sales in that release considering. Yeah. Now I have it on PS5, so I'm thinking about I'm not gonna rebuy it, I don't think. Although it would play better on my PC than it would on my PS5, hardware wise, but the illusion is unraveled, yet you've brought a friend back with you. It is Torgal! It's the dragon dog. This is Torgal. To Torgal. There's the there's the Ben Star. I needed to just say Torgal to like anchor me. Torgal. To Torgal. A pup raised in the duchy. There is no more loyal and ally in battle, and no keener guide when the road ahead is uncertain. Ah, that would explain the aberration and the lingering ether. Torgal here is to lead you back to your own world. Clive has embraced his harrowing past and in doing so reclaims the memories he lost. Though not a conscious act, he has manifested his readiness to return home in the form of a trusted companion. Even so, it was difficult to accept what I've done. Yeah, because this is definitely in this stage of the story where he still thinks he... A, he didn't know who Ifrit was. Then he comes to grip with that he is Ifrit and that he, quote-unquote, potentially killed his brother, Joshua, which didn't happen. So... My younger brother, Joshua, was a kind and gifted soul. The inheritor of the Phoenix's flames, who was destined to become Archduke, as our father had before him. If Joshua was murdered, his bright future cut short. So yeah, this is gonna be in the, the early young adult act. Or the crossover, so not the DLC. Interesting. From that day onwards, I lived for one purpose only. 
the dominant of fire that had slain my brother, and I would have my revenge. I spent years tracking the killer until one day I came to understand it had been me all along. I was young and distraught when I first summoned Ifrit. I hadn't known such power lurked within me, or that I could even exist at all. The transformation was instinctive, uncontrolled, and it was by my hand that Joshua died. Yeah, this is early enough in the game before he finds out Joshua's alive. And yeah, it wouldn't be much of a phoenix if he had died. Exactly. Exactly right. I can but imagine the anguish this caused you. There was anguish, yes. And a guilt I will never escape, but I cannot let it stop me. I was born the vessel of Ifrit's power. I need to know why. It was in search of answers that I went to Phoenix Gate and delved into the ruins below. Oh, okay, it connects. There, I'd found the courage to face my past and accept the truth. And then everything faded to black. So it's the Phoenix Gate ruins. Okay. Okay. I also don't know where the DLCs actually happen because the DLCs are part of the main story, not the end game. So I don't know when those two actually coincide. Because the Leviathan could be earlier. I don't know. I haven't played him yet. I will soon. Hmm. Your tale suggests that something in the ruins, some mysterious force, was responsible for your inadvertent journey. So is that going to be more lore about Omega than in 16? I guess that that's that's kind of what I'm getting. Some mysterious force, potentially Omega, even though the the 16 Omega is way different than the 14s. And if you arrived in Eorzea from a place sacred to the Phoenix and its flames, then it stands to reason. Yes. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that to, that to see you home, we must return to the beginning. Our road takes us back to the burning wall. Once there, your furry comrade will lead us exactly where we need to go. Oh, yep. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Give him the nod, then you're in. I return to the burning wall. At the culmination of his fiery duel, Clive breaks through his mental barriers and at last accepts the truth that the monstrous beast before him is himself. He then returned victorious to the real world, and it seems you have not returned alone. Clive's resolve has manifested an old companion from the swirling ether, the loyal Torgal. Tor Torgal. Tor Torgal. Flat A. Torgal. <laughs> will serve as a guide to lead Clive home to his own world. Or so the delighted musician asserts. And after listening to the continuation of Clive's harrowing tale, the minstrel is adamant that this journey be this journey begin at the beginning. The burning wall. Indeed. Give me that transmog though. You get Clive's armor for doing this. And the Torgal Mount. And the Torgal Pup Minion. It's quite the crossover. I'm not entirely sure when this uh, YouTube version of this will go live. Because as of recording, it is only in game for one more week before it will be removed. To be brought back at a later date, perhaps. But it is a time-limited event, so it might only be in the game once. Or they'll put it back in like a year or like on an anniversary event or something like that. Because they brought back the 15 event before. So, it stands to reason. Are we up above or down below? We're up above. Look at this pup. 
Torgal's ears are perked up, his senses focused on his surroundings. Or pricked up. Pricked up? Not perked up? They're pricked up? Okay. Such an incredible sight. I was in no state to appreciate these crystals the first time. Clyde, that was an hour ago. Well, maybe not. It may have been about half a day or more, because he was in hospice care, I guess, at the time. We've come this far. Now Torgal will be our guide. Such was the purpose of his creation, after all. Making sure I didn't miss anything. Ready, Torgal? Take me home. Mark. Once you choose to depart, Clive and the Wandering Minstrel will accompany you. Torgal will then begin leading you onwards. Follow Torgal to his destination and try not to fall behind. If you leave Clive or the Minstrel for any reason or lose sight of Torgal, you may try again by returning to the starting point. Oh, gosh! <laughs> Schmovin'. Gotta follow the pupper through these level 40 mobs. <laughs> I guess I just wanted to make a sequence where you ran with Torgal, I suppose. That's fine. A skidoosh. Who doesn't want to run with Torgal? I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a dog guy, but I'm also not heartless to animals. And this big pupper is a pretty good boy. Look at his face. He's a little floaty right now, but Mark. <laughs> Excuse me, he is a wolf? Almost of the dire variety? I don't know. He's still a pupper. Every, well, every dog is a pupper until they're a doggo. So I, I guess Torgal is more of a doggo because you get pupper Torgal as well. I sense the end to this extraordinary tale is at hand. So much 16 music. This is it, boy. The tale ends where it began. Where you first found me. Indeed. I was baffled as to why this of all places would serve as a junction between our two worlds, but now I think I understand. You do. Some years ago, Eorzea was visited by a cataclysmic disaster known as the Seventh Umbral Calamity. Yet even as fire and ruin threatened all we held dear, the world underwent a mystical renewal. It was as if the star was reborn. No, Louis Swa did that. More or less. Our theory attributes the miracle to a benevolent entity claiming that the undying phoenix flared into being to save us in our hour of direst need. Yeah, Louis Swa turned into the phoenix, the blue phoenix, and became a primal briefly. That was the events of uh, A Realm Reborn, the very beginning. It's in the, uh, the full cinematic, and you only get that cinematic if you complete the Binding Coils of Bahamut, the ARR raid. The Phoenix. The burning wall itself is a scar left by those events, its crystal ridges having erupted from the earth overnight. Some believe these monoliths of solidified flame to be proof of the Phoenix's deliverance. The bond with your brother, the Phoenix of your world, 
may have been the connection which brought you to this sacred place in ours. That makes sense. Drawn to the flame. Oh! It seems our time together is at an end. Thank you both for all you've done. But press on, friend. No matter how daunting the hardship or bitter the truth, or may your journeys be fair. Hmm. I'll press on. Give him the the big dialogue. Always. No matter what fate awaits at journey's end. Hey, he said the thing. <laughs> he said the thing. Come, Torgal. They have answers to seek, and Valistea awaits. That's really cool. I wonder if knowing the connecting point here in 16, or 14's connection to 16, if it would actually make sense in the story. I think it's just during like a fade to black moment anyway. And then he was gone. I feel the stirring of a ballad. But nay, it would be hubris to imagine I could capture Clive's story from so fleeting an excerpt. Ha! Subtext. Please buy a PlayStation 5 or wait for the PC release and purchase Final Fantasy 16 and both of its DLCs. Thank you. Look forward to it. Signed, Yoshi P. <laughs> I mean, it's a really good game. It is a corridor simulator with really fun boss fights and really cool cutscenes and great voice acting. But the combat is literally just a bunch of Final Fantasy 14 dungeons. But you walk forward a little bit and then fight some mobs and walk forward a bit and fight a mini boss and walk forward a little bit and fight some mobs and then fight a boss in a cutscene. That's the whole game over and over and over again. But it's it's really cool and great story and great acting and great cutscenes, but that honor belongs to someone else. Someone privileged to see his tale to its conclusion. Sadly the power to peer into other worlds was not granted me by this day's miracles. I wonder, however, if you might manage it. That see, I freaking told you. He's telling you to play. <laughs> uh huh. I've already played the game. I just haven't played the DLCs yet. Okay. I'll get around to it. It's kind of a lot of Final Fantasy going on. That wasn't a very Scarlet Star. Yeah, he kind of just poofed into like orangey white dust. <laughs> True. Maybe animating a Scarlet Star flying off a la Kirby style is a little too much. Our little adventure is over. Set in motion as it was by a dream most cryptic. I must thank you for indulging my sudden and strange request. As for your promised reward, I hope this is sufficient. Torgal proved such a trustworthy guide that I thought to bind his likeness to a summoning whistle. You can just do that? May his loyal spirit serve you well on your travels until we meet again. Yep. Uh-huh. Good. <laughs> so you get Torgal Pup? Go on. You know you want to pet the adorable fellow. What could possibly go wrong? The Torgal Whistle. And the Metian attire coffer. A banded chest containing a complete set of Metian attire. Could be Meshian. Met, met, no, it's Metian. I forgot how it's pronounced in 16. Metian. You can now exchange MGP for special items by speaking with the gold saucer attendant at the gold saucer. Found the flame. Torgal pup. 
Let's southern it up real quick. <clears throat> nope, that's still... Where my minion? Where are my minions at? Minion guide. According to the Wandering Minstrel, the beast who appeared to aid the stranded Clive was a guiding spirit born of its master's memory. So impressed was the ever insightful musician by the creature, he decided to recreate a young version of it, which, despite its diminutive size, already possesses the indomitable spirit of the fine hound it will one day become. And if you... can you actually... It has the independent pet trait, which means it'll just wander around. Without having, it'll follow you, obviously, but if you just stand still, it'll idle and do stuff. Then you get the Torgal Whistle, which is the mount. Which is adult Torgal. Unfortunately, it can't be armored Torgal. That would be a spoiler. According to the Wandering Minstrel, the beast who appeared to aid Clive was a guiding spirit. Okay, so impressed was the ever insightful musician to the creature. He decided to create his faithful facsimile in hopes that it might also serve as your loyal companion. Bark, bark, and then you can you can pet the dog. Of course. And they had to, right? It's a good animation. And of course he could fly, because everything could fly in this game. Oh, he howls when he takes off? Yep. Yeah, he's flying, though. <laughs> That's just because of the enchantment on any of our mounts in this game. Lore-wise, they have a an enchantment that allows them to to take to the air. And then the uh, the Clive armor set. Let's save this outfit to preview it in case you haven't seen it. It would give you big chest energy if you have big chest, male or female. Uh, male Vieira bun boys, as you can see, have negative chest. <laughs> it's very much kind of a little slouchy, little concaved. But again, this is it's new armor from Dawn Trail. So once the lighting engine also gets updated, it's going to look even better. But it is some of the highest textured armor in the game right now. It is uh, pretty freaking cool looking, that's for certain. I'll just put this down here in my messy inventory of I'll get to it latersville. Stuff down here is just different stuff I've unlocked for glam. Because that's the end game, right? And then we can also go to the gold saucer. They do have kind of strange posture, that's for certain. They have like an arched stance. Crank that BGM down so it's not blasting. So is it this gold saucer attendant? I don't think so. No. So is it the regular one? Like the, because this one's called the gold saucer. So this is one. Oh gosh. Oh, okay, here we go. Are they here? Must be. Yeah. Land of icons, find the flame to sail forbidden seas away. Who I really am. The state of the realm before the storm. Forevermore. There's a bunch. Uh, let me double check. I just had this page pulled up. And then, of course, I closed it like a dingus. Because there's a lot. Let me scroll down here one moment. Yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten songs. I think it starts starts here. Yeah. 
So it's the ones that are all 20,000. Yep. And then you also can go over here. And there is a new triple triad card. Which I already purchased. I did not already purchase it. The Clive Rossfield card. Pick that up. What are the stats on the Clive card? Let's see. Gold saucer, card list. Okay. That is pretty good. Similar to a lot of the hero cards, they always have usually two strong, one middle, and one weak. The uh, other Final Fantasy ones are like too strong, too weak. Interesting shot of Clive. I guess it's just an art picture. Why not a place where people can live on their own terms? Yeah. That's the whole event. Guess I'll pick up all of these orchestra rolls. I might change out our entire house to be only these songs. <laughs> just... Because right now we have like the Fall Guys crossover music in there. So I'm going to go do that. But if you were watching live, appreciate it. If you were watching on YouTube, also thank you very much. Again, I have my entire Final Fantasy 16 playthrough on YouTube. It's like 50-ish chunks of one hour. It, it's a lot. <clears throat> it's a long game. So I do everything. Just kind of like I did in Final Fantasy VII Remake. And what I'm currently still doing in Rebirth. Even though in Rebirth we are doing the hard mode playthrough chapters. Which are coming out now-ish. Depending on when this video also goes up. Alright, that's it. Again, my name was Bay. No forehead on camera today, unfortunately. But there's plenty of that where you can get it on the channel. Alright, I'm getting out of here. Just go, go watch other videos or something. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, bye. The end card is rolling right now. Yep. That's enough. End the recording. Thank you. <laughs>